Okay, so we're basically just practicing right now, trying to use this formula 14 because it's a little bit involved. So in the last video, we practiced using this formula to take some Laplace transforms. In this video, I want to practice using it to go the other way, to take an inverse Laplace transform. So what I've got written up on the board is the Laplace transform version of the formula. Of course, the inverse formula just says, if I start with this and I apply the inverse Laplace transform, what I will get is this quantity that's in brackets right here. Okay, so I've got two problems up here on the board. I'm gonna suggest that you pause the video, try to work those through on your own, and then tune back in and you can check your work and sort of compare strategies. Welcome back. <laughs> so here, I've got this fraction with e to the negative 3t on top over s plus 4. I kind of want to just write that as a product so it's easier to keep track of things. So I'm going to say that's the inverse, I want to take the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative 3t times 1 over s plus 4. So that looks a little bit more like this, and I can see that my a here then is going to be 3. So I'm going to be turning on some function that's translated three units to the right at time 3. <laughs> That means I want this piece to be the Laplace transform of y. So I want to figure out what my y is. Now do just be careful, the a in this formula is not the a in that formula. Okay? But here, this formula is a little simpler to use. I've got 1 over s plus 4, so adding 4 is subtracting negative 4. So this is just the Laplace transform of e to the negative 4t. So my y of t here for this part is just e to the negative 4t. So I figured out what my a is and I figured out what this function y of t is, so now I can put the pieces together. So I can say we're going to get mu sub 3 of t, that's turning this on at time 3, times this function, except instead of evaluated at t, I want to evaluate it at t minus 3. So I'm going to replace t in that formula with a t minus 3. Do be careful, it's not negative 4 t minus 3, it's negative 4 times the quantity t minus 3. So that would be our inverse Laplace transform for this first one. Okay, let's try the second one. And I'm going to do the same thing to start out with. I want to rewrite this as a product so that I can sort of focus on the two individual factors. So we're trying to take the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative 5t times 1 over s squared minus 9. So, I can see here, my a in this case is 5, that'll be the time at which I'm turning things on, and that's the amount that I'm going to shift my function to the right. Now, I want to view that as the Laplace transform of some function y, that's going to be the function that I'll shift 5 units to the right. So I need to try to figure out what that is by taking the inverse Laplace transform of that. But it's a little bit tricky right now with this s squared minus 9, so I'm going to come off to the side and use some partial fractions to try to write that as a sum of two pieces that maybe look a little more like this. So I'm going to say 1 over s squared minus 9, that's 1 over s plus 3, times s minus 3, that's two linear factors, so that's going to contribute two fractions with denominators s plus 3 and s minus 3, and the numerators will just be constants. <laughs> so now, to solve for a and b, I'm going to multiply through by this, my least common denominator, to clear all of the denominators. So when I do that, I get 1 is equal to a times s minus 3, because here the s plus 3 will cancel, but the other factor won't, plus b times s plus 3, because here the s minus 3 will cancel and the s plus 3 won't. And with linear factors, I find the simplest way to solve for my constants 
is to just plug in some nice numbers. So if s is equal to 3, this becomes 1 equals, that kills off the a's, 1 equals 6b, so b would equal 1 sixth. If s is equal to negative 3, that's what's going to kill off the b's, this becomes 1 equals negative 6a, so a is negative 1 sixth. <clears throat> so I'm essentially saying I've got that the Laplace transform of y of t, just focusing on that particular part, is equal to 1, let's see, a was negative 1 sixth, so negative 1 sixth over s plus 3 plus 1 sixth over s minus 3. Okay. And I want to try to find what my y of t is. Okay. So I'm going to apply the Laplace inverse transform to both sides. So that means that y of t will be the inverse Laplace transform of negative 1 sixth over s plus 3 plus 1 sixth over s minus 3. But now I can use the fact that the inverse transform is linear. So I can break it up over this sum and then for each term I can factor out the constant. So I'm going to get negative 1 sixth the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 3 plus 1 sixth, the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 3. And now each of these is a very nice match, so that's going to give me negative 1 sixth e to the s plus 3 is s minus a negative 3, so this will be e to the negative 3t plus 1 sixth s minus 3, so now this a is 3, e to the 3t. So that's my y of t. So now I've got the two pieces that I need for this formula. I needed to know what a was, and I needed to know what function I was turning on and shifting by a distance of a. So now... I'm able to say that the inverse Laplace transform of this whole thing is going to be mu sub 5 of t, that's my on switch, and now I want to take this function, multiply it by that, but I'm going to replace all of the t's with a t minus 5 to shift it 5 units to the right. So we're going to have negative 1 sixth e to the negative 3 times the quantity t minus 5, plus 1 sixth e to the 3, times the quantity t minus 5. All right. So really about breaking things up and working with just one piece at a time to get those two crucial pieces of information. What is the a? When am I turning it on? And how far am I shifting it? And what is the y? What's the function that I'm turning on? and shifting.